I'm Richard Clark. I record these talks every day as a way to deepen my inquiry. Listen each day and deepen your own practice. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book, Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 445, Part 3. Another visitor asks, is there differentiation made between the sentience and the insentience, chit and jada, in the opening verse of Apadesa Sara? Maharshi, the Apadesa is from the standpoint of the hearer. There is no truth in the insentience jada. One whole consciousness, chit, prevails all alone. In this talk, a visitor asks about the differentiation between the sentient, chit, and the insentient, jada, as mentioned in the opening verse of Apadesha Sara. Here is the verse. By the law of the Creator, the fruits of action are realized. Is action then supreme? No, it is inert, insentient. Sri Ramana Maharshi's response helps clarify this distinction, especially from the standpoint of his teachings on the nature of the self. The questioner points out that Apadesa Sara mentions a difference between sentient and insentient. This seems to imply a duality between what is conscious and what is not. Ramana explains that this differentiation is made from the perspective of the hearer or the spiritual aspirant. Essentially, it's a teaching method meant to guide the seeker. Ramana emphasizes that the ultimate truth is there is no distinction between sentient and insentient. He says, there is no truth in the insentient jada, one whole consciousness Chit prevails all alone. This statement underscores his core teaching that everything is one consciousness. What we perceive as insentient objects or beings are, in fact, not separate from this single, all pervading consciousness. Ramana's teachings revolve around self-inquiry, the practice of questioning, who am I, to understand the true nature of the self. When he says that only one whole consciousness prevails, he's pointing to the idea that the self is pure consciousness. Everything else what we consider as objects or separate entities, is merely an appearance within this consciousness. From this perspective, happiness and suffering are also part of this single consciousness. The mind creates distinctions and labels experiences as pleasant or unpleasant. However, when you realize that everything is part of the same consciousness, these labels lose their grip. The true self, being pure consciousness, is beyond the dualities of happiness and suffering. The belief in the mind and the ego creates the illusion of separateness. The ego identifies with the body and mind, 
thinking of itself as an individual apart from others and the world. Ramana's response is a reminder that this is just an illusion. The true self or pure consciousness is not limited by the ego or the mind's constructs. In practice, understanding this dialogue means recognizing that any perceived differences between sentience and insentience, self and others, or happiness and suffering, are all constructs of the mind. The essence of self-inquiry is to see through these constructs and realize the underlying oneness of all existence. This realization is not just intellectual, but a profound inner experience where you see and feel that there is only one undivided consciousness. Ramana Maharshi's teachings here is a call to transcend the mind's dualistic thinking and experience the unity of consciousness, the unity of the self. By deeply knowing and experiencing this oneness, you can find true peace and liberation. So know yourself and be always free and at peace. In 40 verses on reality, Ramana Maharshi explains the nature of the self, the ultimate reality, and self-inquiry. My new book, with my comments and inquiry questions, opens these teachings up and brings them into your practice and experience. Available now from Amazon. Link in the video description. These videos bring Ramana's teachings into your direct experience. Click subscribe to see more. Click thumbs up to like and send questions and start a dialogue with the comments 